Once upon a time, in 1812 in fact, the Brothers Grimm published the first volume of their children's and household tales, a collection that eventually grew to include 200 stories. Ahead of you is a forest of fairy stories. Every tree in that forest represents one. But it was in vain to speak. Cried, strike, strike away, strike away. got away in the wind without my teaching. Hand, and the carring shall last a whole year. You may... Then it sank lower and let itself and down on a great cabbage garden, girt round by walls, and the went so that he came softly to the ground they were within, on cabbages and it shut. And heard them. Very the end of the world. Then she... Will I devour? Then the, the man. Woman. He says you must look out of the carriage. Holla. In other houses it is... Oh, let me out. And then she said, Let's Yes. Go. See that the tower had legs. Now and when they the pasture, they, were... they generally remained caught so in the red feather. Well, Peter opened the door so and wanted no to see the The yeah, king said, And if you can guess yeah. that, you shall be free. When it was finished, he said, Therein I shall they that. would not last long. Look at when, however, he had sat right down to work again. Had one time that the more. as I wish. And he named a certain oh, were made of shining polished square stones on Sound each of which music, which became yeah. more and more. Grand Master Schultz, take me prisoner, right? That I may sleep. She promised the mannequin what he wanted, and Sit for and that, pick them out again. In the evening, when she had worked till she was weary, she had no bed to go to, but had to sleep by the fireside in the ashes. And as on that account, she. Three thousand times as poor. Art no better than the common people. Thou dost not belong to us. Let it roast. Now. It happened that while he was at the fire, and the woman was forced to go out of the kitchen on account of some other work, the two children of the poor broom maker ran in, stood by the spit, and turned it round once or twice. And as at that moment two little bits of the bird fell down into the dripping tin, one of the boys said, We will eat these two little bits. I am so hungry, and no one will ever miss them. The goldsmith was crafty and cunning, and knew very well what kind of bird it was. He called his wife and said, Roast me the gold bird, and take care that none of it is lost.